You're not filming yet, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. You're allowed to drink. We're on lockdown. It's you... Friday afternoon. Yeah, you got wine. I've got rum and coke. And the sun is shining. Yes, I do drink rum and coke in pints. There's no other way to drink it. Hello, my little baking buddies, and welcome back to the bake house. Today is a Friday. Whoop whoop. The sun is shining. The breeze up here is not too big, which is a big thing. Um, we've been in the garden, so excuse me if I look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. But Pop this this recipe is a quick and easy recipe that probably would suit students or as well. It's it's cheap. Um, it's predominantly leftovers, as in leftover chicken, um, frozen veg defrosted but you know just bog standard stuff you got in the house really nothing fancy here we are going to make a chicken pot pie the easy way how could we now the issue that we have is the recipe that i'm following is a mr pillsbury recipe oh now, i love the pillsbury dough man yeah now a lot of you probably will look at the camera and think what the hell is pillsbury but as john just said it used to be a little fat dough boy. I look a bit like him. And it was called the Pillsbury Dough Boy. So um, Pillsbury made lots of products like, um, I can't think who made them now. Is it just Roll make them now? Yeah, they, they used to be ready made. It's like, like cans. Croissants and buns. Yeah, you can get like the cans of croissant or the cans of uh, pan au chocolat in the fridge department of you your fridge. bread rolls the, and everything. Um, supermarket and you literally twist them to open up the can and it all flies out at you or well, Pillsbury were very much the same but I think it's probably just roll that make it now yeah the Pillsbury is an American company yeah Pillsbury is an American company and so the problem that you've had is that the actual recipe is in cups because they like their cup measurements so we've done our best to convert it and I will say the American recipe John will chirp Try. in hopefully with the conversion Roughly. so the recipe calls for a third of a cup of butter which is two and a half ounces very good yep it is a third of a cup of all-purpose flour which is plain flour again same two and a half ounces It says a third of a cup of onion, but I'm not measuring an onion. It's a, it's an it's onion. a medium onion. That's fine. Half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, and then it says one and three quarter cups of chicken broth, which we're taking as chicken stock. This is a fresh chicken stock, not one that I've made out of a stock cube, but if you've got a stock cube, that's just as good as anything yeah, else. I just have to pass in Sainsbury's and grab one. Exactly, one. and that amounts to about 420 milliliters, approximately. Yeah, it's one, it's one pack yeah. if you're buying it in some It's like almost, you get a little tiny bit left, but it's more or less a whole pack. Half a cup of milk, which is... In milliliters, 118, say 120. It's 120 mils of whole milk. And then it says two and a half cups of shredded cooked chicken or turkey i haven't measured that this is leftover chicken that i've got and so the whole lot's going in about because 20 ounces. why yeah. not and then again about two cups of frozen mixed vegetables that's about 16 ounces thawed now what i did with that was i just got a mug and filled it up twice and chucked it in and let it defrost now obviously our mixed vegetables are just carrots peas sweet corn and beans because I have a very fussy daughter, but a son that'll eat anything. So she's gonna sit there and pick out every pea. Anything that's green. And every green bean, and only eat carrots and sweet corn. So you can see how big the carrots and sweet corn is. And so we wish her well with yeah, the give her something tonight. to do during exactly. lockdown. Exactly, yeah. she loves the challenge, she loves it. So, basically, what we're going to do is we are going to melt the butter over a medium heat we are going to stir in our onion cook it till it's 
translucent you know, don't want to put any color on it but translucent then we are going to add in our flour obviously you're going to melt the butter to cook the did i say the butter no you didn't but yeah right, the butter's to melt you belt can't even speak i really have put the butter in the pan put the onions in the pan this is the first glass i've poured <laughs> honestly you uh. put the butter in the pan you cook your onions until they're soft then you add in your flour and the salt and pepper you know cook it so it's like a roux you're basically making a roux cook your then flour you out. chuck in your chicken stock and your milk and then you add chicken and vegetables all in stir it all up transfer it into a lovely pie dish one pie dish and for us we don't like too much pastry so i'm not making a pie with a base this time because you don't need to a pot pie can have either just a top crust or a top and a bottom crust we prefer just a top crust and we are using puff pastry and a good old fashioned block of just roll not not pillsbury not pillsbury yeah. but there are other brands available sure. but we are using ready-made puff pastry because there really isn't any excuse for wasting that much time although to be honest i may attempt to make puff pastry on the channel i've done puff, puff yeah we did pastry, it in school years ago and i can do it and since we've been doing this channel i have absolutely made all of my own pastry yep. but i do draw the line at puff pastry because it actually is quite painful there's quite a lot of rolling and turning and mixing and whatever and my hands can't take that much anymore but so. the whole point of this this video is so quick and easy recipes for people who just don't have that sort of time and it's a family meal so if you happen to be a student and you've got you know you're sharing a house you can whip something like this together really quickly and there's a hot meal for everyone yep. and they'll all be majorly impressed because you've used good old puff pastry that nobody knows about so now we're going to put our butter into the saucepan and off we go right butter's melted in go the onions So that's the onions nicely sizzling away. I am now going to add salt and pepper and the flour and mix it until it's well blended. So we're cooking out the flour. Yeah, nothing worse than finding floury lumps no. in sauces. In go our salt. Good quality sea salt. We're using white pepper because it's a chicken dish. So use whatever pepper you like. I mean, it's just a you know, personal preference. And in goes our flour. I say about bits of flour appearing in sauces. It was, it's something I grew up with. My mother was a fantastic cook for baking cakes, but if she made a gravy, you quite often find that there was bits of flour in a gravy. So that was part of the fun. We're basically what we're doing is making a roux but with onions already in it. So you have to sort of, you can see it all comes away from the side of the pan. What you need to do is make sure your pan is not too high on the heat. Because the last thing you want now is for it to burn. So you just keep stirring it round because that horrible taste of flour will cook out. Or, or invoke members of my childhood. <laughs> yeah. And then we're gradually going to stir in the chicken broth. We'll go with the chicken broth first. Give it a good mix in between. Don't pour it all in at once because if you pour it all in at once, you're going to end up with a lumpy sauce, which you don't really want. So a bit at a time. Plus I would also think if you pour it on at once it's actually really difficult to blend. Exactly. It's just and it would reduce the heat way. in your pan significantly so best way to do this is with well I find my best way of doing this is with a wooden spoon not a whisk or anything else but you use 
whatever's good for you. And as you can see, the more you add and the more you mix, the smoother the actual mixture gets. It's becoming like a paste, right? Absolutely. So give yourself time in between adding to sort of mix it properly. Yeah, there's no rush. You know, we said this is a quick recipe and it is a quick recipe. This is the only bit of work you've got to do. It's quick because it's full of leftovers. And, you know, in this day and age, people can't afford to waste food. So, you know, if you've had a roast, why not make the chicken last for a second day and save the leftovers? You could even freeze your leftovers until you're ready to make a pie with it. You don't need to have like chicken two days in a run if you really don't want to. I was also thinking, obviously we were saying about students or busy families, if you haven't got time to cook a chicken or load of chicken portions, um, or if you don't have your leftovers, you can also buy the cooked chicken from the supermarkets, whether they be in the deli section or even the cold cooked chicken portions that you can get in the fridge sections. Mm -hmm. It's chicken's chicken, yeah? But this recipe is for cooked chicken, so yeah, please make sure it's don't try and do this with raw chicken because it's not going to be cooked and I don't want anybody getting ill. It's not long enough to, to cook a chicken that way. So. No. Now, as you can see, that's a really nice soft sauce, apart from the onions that are in it. Yep. And so now I'm going to add my milk, which makes it creamy. So it's a sort of a creamy... So this, this is Chicken normal, sauce. full, fat, normal milk. Yes, this is full fat milk. Now, I guess you could use whatever milk you use, whether you use semi-skimmed or skimmed. To be fair, we generally use skimmed, but in a recipe like this, I would, I would make the effort and go and buy a pint of milk because this milk is going to make this sauce a creamy, chickeny sauce as opposed to just a sauce that happens to have a bit of milk trucked into it. Yeah, a bit of like a white you water need like, sauce. Yeah, you need cream, a bit of cream in it. So, as you can see, that's a lovely really combined good. sauce. And that really, guys, is it. It really is it. Because all we're going to do now is we're going to add our chicken. And we're going to add our vegetables. Well, I suppose there are various other forms of mixed veg, so it doesn't yeah, really matter what It doesn't what matter which you prefer. You can use any frozen mixed veg, or you can use fresh if you want. You know, if you're leftovers from a roast, fair play, chuck it in. We'll have to do bubble and squeak at some point if we're going to talk about leftovers after Sorry, a roast. Sorry, I've got peas flying everywhere. But... I know, you tell me off for being messy. That will make oh. air today's Friday afternoon. In go the veg. I thought I was the messy cook. You're supposed to be the one that's all perfect. There we go. And then in goes our chicken. Like that. Now give it a good mix round. Try and combine it. See, sorry. Such a mess sometimes. I'm saying nothing. I'm exactly the same thing again. Drink the back. There we go. So we need to get things coated just like that. It smells lovely. So I'm going to fade out and go back to the main camera. So you're going to put this into the pot. Because all I'm going to do now is turn this into our pie dish and then add so that's all nicely mixed we're gonna transfer it into our pie dish now obviously we are a family of four and um, our children are nearly 15 so basically adults if there's just the two of you you could either make this pie and have leftovers or reduce down your measurements and just make it for the two of you. Or pig out. Yes, there John. you go. But not everybody does the pig out. Thing. Yeah. 
so. The last thing I'm going to do is to roll out my puff pastry. If I can get it out of the packet. You sure there's not supposed to be any wine in this recipe? Or have you just drank it all? No, no wine in this recipe. Just and wine again, in I guess if you wanted to put wine in it, if you wanted to sort be of the reason why you couldn't put a slosh or something in, yeah. You know, you just alter your liquid. I would say if you're going to put a slosh of wine in, then leave out a bit of the chicken stock. Don't leave out the milk, I would say, because the milk is the creamy part. But then again, I guess if you have a dairy intolerance and you can't use milk, then just add extra chicken stock. It's really not going to make a difference. There's always ways around things. So the, the recipes we're doing, we're finding on different places. And we're just trying them mostly for the first time. Sometimes I'll be completely recipes we honest, do. this recipe had originally, the idea of it had come from a different recipe book from, I'm not going to mention actually which book it's from. Or shall I? No, that's fine. You don't like that book. Shall I give my opinion? Yeah, of course you can. This recipe originally came from... The plan for this recipe. Yeah. yeah. Came from Jamie Oliver's five ingredients for a chicken pot pie. Um, when I actually analysed that recipe, what he was actually cooking was a chicken and mushroom pie. There was only mushrooms in it, with the exception of some thyme. He had put some fresh thyme in which you can add if you want to, that you know, you can always add herbs or whatever. Um, but sauce wise, the only thing that he put in was, I think it was something like a tablespoon of, or two tablespoons of red wine vinegar and a couple of spoonfuls of water maybe. Now, I'm not being critical and I can see what he was trying to do, but how can that be a lovely sauce for a chicken pie? Yeah, we like creamy sauce in our pies. You know, chicken and mushroom pies, all these kind of things. It's nice if they're creamy, not if they're just kind of a juice or something. So that was why I went and looked elsewhere for a different. But that's the thing. Look at different recipes. Recipe. You know, experiment. Add a few different things. Change things around. Don't be scared. It's only food. And I think that's the thing. I think the thing is with these cookery books, with all the cookery books, I mean, some of them obviously are very specific, for very specific reasons. And if you want to create those perfect dinner party meals that look astounding, then fine, fair well, you know, fair do, do what you like. But most recipe books are just a guide. And so if you don't like one of the ingredients, swap it out for something different that you do like. Because, you know, it's you that got to eat it at the end of it. There's no point cooking something that you're not going to like because it's got some fancy summer or another in it or whatever. You do what suits you and your family at the end of the day. So I think this pastry is rolled out enough. Yep, I think it's big enough. Yeah. Yep. Always make sure you put a bit of flour on your rolling pin and a little bit of flour on where you're rolling it out. Just in case you've never done this sort of thing. Right, now I've got a lovely lip on my pie dish. So you just, for me, I'm just going to push it down and stick it to the lip. Now, you, would your leg wash that lip to, to join that on? You can, but the lid or the rim that we are using is actually um, rough. It's kind of designed It's not for glazed. That. Yeah. So, um, we don't need to, but if you, you know, I'm going to use an egg anyway to glaze the top. So, it, it wouldn't have been a problem if I wanted to glaze the No, but we've got like an enamel tin dish as well. And we yes, probably would have had to just put a little bit of egg on the edge of that just to seal it. I'm teaching those that do not know. I only know so I watch you. <laughs> there. Now we need to cut a hole in it to let the steam out because there is going to be 
a little bit of cooking going on in there. I'm going to go and grab an egg, egg wash it, and then put it in my oven. Right, so here we are with our egg wash, and we're literally just going to put a good coating over to make it go nice and golden brown. And if they don't know what an egg wash is? Egg wash is just a beaten egg. Sometimes people add a little bit of salt to it to break the egg down a bit more. Some people add a splodge of milk in it if they want to, to make it a bit looser, or even you could just add a little bit of water into it if you wanted to. But I just tend to smash it up with a fork and spread it over my lid as such. Now this needs to go into a hot oven so you're going to preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius and it's going to cook for let's just check about 30 to 40 minutes basically all you're waiting for because obviously your pie filling is cooked so all you're waiting for is your pastry to be nice and cooked and puffed so um, that's it for now and I'll come back once I've got it out of the oven and we can show you cutting it. So see you in a minute. Hi guys, so this is the pie fresh out of the oven. I stand to be corrected, I should have glazed the edge of the pie dish because the pastry sunk away from it, but that doesn't really matter. Not really, Not I'm cooking. All. So uh, let's give it a cut. The pastry is lovely and flaky. Nice and thick as well. Yeah, it smells it's not wonderful. Pie. Very good. Excuse the fact that I've just scraped it all down the side of the thing, but there you go a lovely chicken pot pie or chicken and vegetable pie with a flaky lid. Hope you enjoy it. Come back and see us soon. Please subscribe, everybody. Tell your friends. And do the dingy thing, the ding thing. See you soon. Bye bye.